Hello, good evening, and welcome to my um, Tuesday night live uh, painting demo. Tonight I'm doing a, a painting of uh, Taji Rodriguez. She is a she's a model, and uh, I first saw her picture on um, Pinterest actually, but then found more photos on Instagram. And this is a photo that was taken by Aris Jerome. I hope I'm Aris Jerome. I hope I, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. Anyway, so I will just jump in and start painting. Um, I see Matt is here from the U.S. somewhere. Um, and just going to make up a little bit of um, gray here. Just... Uh, do a little bit of initial drawing. Um, just kind of get it set in the panel where I want to paint it. And I am also doing a uh, painting to scale. I mean, painting um, site size, which is the, the reference is the same size in my site as um, as the the painting will be as I get a little bit further along. Let's get some measurements going here. That's just right here is the edge of our coat coming up. The point where her coat meets her hair is right about there. Let's see, get this measurement. That's pretty good. And just really, I mean, the edge of the hair is going to be accurate, but I do want to get the, just throw in a little bit of red there for the sketching. And Steve's here. Yes, finally get to see the start of a painting. Yeah. Okay, With, if in doubt, just measure. It's like I could get pretty far along in a drawing with the with the measurement being wildly off, and then I'll have to do a little bit of backtracking to get it to work. So that's the collar right there. Then she has sort of where her neck comes in, and her chin. Her head is tilted back, so I'm going to be aware that there's essentially these curves that I'm seeing. The cur um, that curve in perspective, her forehead, the base of the nose, the mouth, or get to uh, wrap around. I should really not seeing the underside of her chin, but the way angle that she's holding her head as you would expect to see a little bit more of that. It's the, it's probably because um, the way the photo shot, you're, we're pretty close to the subject. So we're about our line of vision our, is right about here, right out of her chin, but, um, but then we're looking up at the rest of her face. And I think I just have this tilted a little bit too much. I don't want to, I want to exaggerate that curve a little bit to get a little more volume, but I want to make sure that I'm not losing the, the direction of the head. Her nose comes down. And then at some point I am going to start to check these measurements here of the mouth. Here, some people discouraged me from doing this, um, from this reference, because they didn't. They thought that it looked like part of her mouth was missing. It, it's really that she's biting her lip there, and you can barely make it out the tooth that's there. Um, I think I am going to lighten it up just a little bit so that you can see that she's biting her lip, just so that it makes a little more sense. Okay, I do have to stop and measure a little. So that is the separation of the lips right there. 
should be a little bit lower. Probably right about there. We get a measurement from the top too. Okay, this is the part where I just need to take my time a little bit more. Uh, if I do a good job of measuring, then the rest of the that looks pretty good. So I have a fair amount of confidence that that's in the right place. And the base of her nose. One, let's see if I can mix up a little bit of kind of flesh tone that's happening there. Kind of a pale pink, a bit of orange and yellow in it. Let's get a little bit lighter. How much of my palette you can see? Uh, a fair amount, actually, I can see on the monitor. So the base of the nose. Let's get a little bit of measurement here. So one side of the nose is there. The other side right here. So it means I have the shape of her mouth off a little bit. And then the tip. Well, oops, sorry, septum there. It's right about here. Let's get a center line. Okay, that's good. And then I want the tip of her nose. It's really kind of hard to define exactly, but it's where it the light is reflecting off of us, off of it right there. Okay, so. Let me just throw a little bit of dark edge there so we can see it a little bit better. Got to go redder than that. Throw in a nostril. Okay, so this is where useful putting in some of these details I can start to see the center line of where the mouth is so you can see I have the bow of her lips just off a little bit you can just pull it over and the mouth is very red so I do have to come in a little bit cleaner it's partially in shadow here but the near side of the mouth is, I could almost use the pure naphthal red there, maybe. It's um, semi-transparent. I should be able to come in fairly thickly and get a nice um, uh, brighter red. If I can't, then I can start to mix a little bit of the cronacridone red, throw in a touch of yellow get a nice uh, little bit of lighter more intense red there okay and then for areas of red and shadow I can use a sorry I lost you guys for a few minutes um, hopefully we're back again and I, I don't know sometimes my my internet service, I have problems with that, but um, there's a few of you still there. Hopefully I wasn't gone for too long that um, that you missed what I was saying, but I haven't made that much progress, so just doing quite a bit of measuring, um, a little bit of color mixing. Um, I do see that this cheek is a lot lighter than this cheek, even though if you sort of not paying attention, you could paint them close to the same color and value. So I want to make sure that I emphasize that difference. Okay, get the I want to get the shadow that's here. Just an nostril. And I 
I'll come back and refine some of this later, but I just sort of want an indication of where I am and where the eye is. So this is a, this is a real tricky measurement. This is, I think, where a lot of beginning artists go wrong is that her face is foreshortened and they don't, a common mistake would be to grow this measurement here. It's just, it's very small. So her eye is right about here. And how far over it is. So in relationship to the outer edge of her nostril, that's really where it's hitting right about in the center of that. Okay, so I'm gonna measure from here that edge, that looks pretty good. And I wanna get a measurement from the top and bottom. So I'm measuring right to the, her top eyelashes. So I may even have it a little bit, have her a little bit too high, her eye there. I'm just gonna make sure that I define that edge a little bit better so it doesn't stop, start creeping in, away from me. And I need, well, let's get a measurement to the bottom, too. And then I do, yeah, so, and I want to measure from the bottom. I'm getting, grabbing a little bit longer brush here because of the distance. Just as a way of double checking my work. That's not too bad. Okay, so I'm not wildly off. I can see the white of the eye is just a little bit, um, Kind of a violetly violet -y blue color, not too light, but I'm getting a little bit of blue in there. And then her iris is, um, it's looking pretty black, so I'm just going to go with black um, to start off with and get a little bit of light there on that edge of the eyelid. And a little bit too orangey in her cheek there, but that's okay. My paintings tend to suffer to not go for the yellow. And so that drives my overall color cooler than it um, probably should be in some cases. <laughs> Sometimes you can sit back and look at the reference and look at your painting and you can see how much the overall color is shifted. And I usually tend to go too cool. So here's where I want to start turning that corner on the, on the shadow side of her cheek. There's not a lot of her face that's in shadow, but there is a um, drops off fairly quickly um, so that you don't see quite where her um, her jawline, her cheek line stops and where the hair starts to begin. Let's get a little bit of this light in here so that I'm not, she's not feeling like the wrong color. And then a little bit more red than orange right here. And then I have my dark starting to come in right there. Just kind of get the indication of where that shadow line is. And then it moves up her face there. to start moving a little bit in a lighter direction. Oh, just obliterated her eyebrow there, that's okay. Oil paints are very forgiving. And where everything falls into shadow, there's a little bit more red. That's where we're seeing a lot more color, just right along those shadow lines. So, uh, sorry again about the poor internet service. It's just really um, a little distressing tonight. Um, really wish it was um, a little bit better. And 
Still looks like I'm a little bit, at least it's hanging on my picture, but maybe some of you are getting me now, but, oh well, I've just got to keep on painting. Okay, all I was saying basically was, is that, um, that you can exaggerate the colors quite a bit, but you need the grays in the painting to really uh, make it look solid and real. Otherwise, it does start to look a, a little bit cartoony if you exaggerate all your colors and there's no um, no relief of, of grays or neutrals to really um, give it sort of a sense of solidness and kind of a balance of color overall. help with that. So I'm not going to worry about her freckles at this point. I, I am going to try to maybe refresh my screen here. Maybe because I'm hanging, that doesn't mean other people aren't aren't getting it. If someone can hear me, just, um, oh, I can see my screen is actually going now that I refreshed. Okay, great. If, uh, if Matt or Steve are still there, then you just let me know. Um, I see that there are nine people watching. There's no good alert system to let me know when the, um, except that I can see on my own screen, sometimes it's just it has a, uh, the loader spinning. Um, but sometimes I, I keep on working without noticing that the, that the stream or the feed has stopped. So, okay, trying to make sure I get this eye in the right place. Remember, I want to make sure that uh, everything is curving around the form. So this looks like it's a little bit off, a little bit too high. So I'm going to intentionally pull that down a little bit. Um, actually, the line where I put her eye, her her eyelashes, is really closer to where the the upper eyelid crease is. So I'm going to just use that and maybe come back in and put a more definite line. I'm doing. I'm painting everything pretty soft at the moment, just to kind of get a feel of where things are. Okay, that's feeling about right. Um, let's get me indicate where the corners are so I can start to measure. So let's do the absolute corner, far corner. That's all kind of in shadow a little bit, but that's good. And then there's a little bit of eyelash that comes out a little bit further there. And then this, uh, okay, I think you guys are still with me. My, my screen is hanging, but you guys might have better service than I do. Okay. Maybe, no. Sorry, just dealing with uh, technical difficulties here. So I'm going to do this measurement here from the eyelashes, the center of the eye. That looks pretty close. If anything, I'm a little bit too high. Corner of her eye. Then I also want to make sure that this relationship here from corner to corner looks like I'm a little bit off. So I'm just going to pull this corner down just a little bit. into that just slightly and then likewise on the other side I'm going to pull that other corner up just a little bit just so that they're they're relating to each other got a little bit of red in here for the underneath the eyelid and the tear duct It's a little bit browner in color on the lower eyelid here. And 
just a very, it really is not a big value change and it would be easy to exaggerate that shift there. Okay, so I can feel like that eyebrow is feeling a bit too high now. If I have her, oops, that's way too wet. Let's see, dry it up a bit. Got a little bit of black in there, black and red. So my reds are, I have three reds. Um, one's really kind of magenta, which is the alizarin permanent. I have quinacridone red, which is a very cool, very intense red with a really high tinting strength. And then I have my naphthal red, which is a warm red. And uh, they're just, there's a lot of artists who think of it as like um, having, a, you have kind of a, a warm and a cool of every primary color. And um, that's sort of an impressionist way of thinking about color. I tend to just like to have every step on the spectrum where I have the most intensity possible so I can just mix whatever color that I want. Okay, got a little bit of thicker white underneath there. And then I need to lower that eyebrow just a little bit here, I think. I may have to measure just to make sure that I'm in the right place. So top of eyebrow, right about there. Yep, so I'm definitely too high. So looking here, the eyebrow is about somewhere like that, I think. Maybe a little bit higher. So I don't think I was so f um, far off, but something like that. That's looking a little better. Okay, that's looking good. So now I gotta fix that mistake. It almost has to go to white, so I'm gonna try coming in with a dry brush and seeing how much of that paint I can pull up. So it's not really interfering with my ability to get to white at some point. Yeah, so there's a little bit of gray there, but I'll, I'll be able to get to that, that whiteness eventually with thicker and thicker paint. And so then the question is, where's the hairline? So that's going to be... It's a li you know, it's very soft and moving in and out, so just kind of have to indicate where the, the main mass of it is. Okay, and we have James here. Okay, so So we kind of have all the major landmarks in. Now I can do a little bit of refining here. Here's a nice even curve of the eye lashes there. And I want to go a little bit darker on the in the white of the eye just below the eyelid. That is there's a shadow there that's from the upper eyelid. I can also get there by going a little bit lighter here in the white of the eye. Just going to grab my smaller brush here to, to just um, have a little more control here with the iris. And I just want to soften up that edge a little bit like it's in the photograph. I really want you to feel the feel the surface of that. I can soften up this right here too. And then come in with a pretty clean black. And a red there. Goes to red. 
So let's, um, I think this is where I need my crinacridone red there, just to get it to pop a little. I do want to get that kind of sheen that's happening on her her eyelid. So in little spots, it's going completely white. And her iris just needs to be a little bit bigger. That's pretty good. Feeling like this, the the width of the white of her eyes there maybe is just a little bit too big, but I do still have the tear duct there to paint in. Well, that's a lot of red. <laughs> Went a little too red. It's actually not that bad. Once I get all the value changes in there, it's not going to look way out of place. And I'm just going to see if I can put in that tiny little highlight. I don't know if a lot of small ends, but I might be able to get it. No, not quite. And, and it was a little bit too wet, too. I'm going to need a, a better detail brush to do that with. Let's see what I have laying around. Is this one? I, I need to buy some new brushes soon because I'm really hurting myself with the, these curled up little detail brushes. Okay, well I think I might be able to do it with this one. It does have kind of a bit of fur on it, but That's not too bad. I, and then I have a little bit of light coming in right at the bottom edge here. Black there, so I can just clean that up a little. Okay, but I gotta get this little brush out of my hands. It's, it's very dangerous. To be hanging on to a little brush at this point in the painting. So it's a little bit of red in the flesh tones, but it's pretty light. And so I gotta, and it's the white that's making, that'll pale it up a little bit. So if I get it in the right value, the color intensity should be about right also. Got a fair amount of white here on the other underside of the eyebrow. Round it to, for that to look light. So it's all about staging the lights and darks. So I'm coming in with a little bit darker around that light. stream seems to be holding up okay at the moment. And so this distance here, this is where I usually go wrong. It's just a short distance. It's not too bad. Okay, let's see if I can use up some of this black on my palette because I do know that um, I need to get the mass of the hair in. Look how big that brush is. That might speed things along a little bit. Just work with the brush strokes to sort of mimic 
what's going on in the hair. That's what a good big brush is because then you don't tighten up on it too much. Uh, sorry about that again. This I am so I'm not doing this every week, fighting my my little iPhone here to get a good connection. I do have a um, a webcam that I bought. I just haven't really have figured out how to get all the the sound and the feed and the quality of it to work. Um, out yet. Okay, and this comes under. We have just a little bit of black in there underneath the jawline there. Neckline. Okay, so this I need to refine quite a bit because it, uh, it doesn't look quite right. Um, but of course I'm using this huge brush to do it. And I need the blacks to get much darker too um, in her hair. So that's going to take um, additional passes of black to get the, the level of dark that I want. And then of course we have this dark here that's um, we're seeing inside her jacket. I guess maybe we're seeing um, flesh, but it's really in shadow, so we really don't see too much there. Okay, and okay, so I do need to make some adjustments to the shape of her face a little losing her chin's a little bit too long her forehead's a little bit too long so we've got to work those things out okay so now I'm, I'm just pushing paint around a little bit and not this bigger brush for now okay at some point I'm going to come in maybe with that same brush and do um, most of the red of her coat and then come back in later and refine it. So I want to get this, her cheek here. And then I want to define a little bit where the hair, where that separation is. Even if we can't see it, I kind of feel like I need that a little bit to, to get my anatomy right. This is a part of the cheek that goes very white. I'm just going to leave the white of the panel for now, but eventually that's going to be painted in uh, thicker uh, white paint. Get a little bit of the pink into the cheek. And then I go darker here, if not redder. That's a little bit too red. To define where that, that hollow of her cheek is. And then there's sort of a little bit of a stripe going on. We have kind of darker, lighter, then darker again here, helping turn that cheek. So need to pay attention to that. If And there's always a little bit of yellow here in this part of the, the eye, I'm finding. It's a good place to shift color a little bit. Now that was a little bit, bit exaggerated, but... As I knock it back, then it starts to look right. We got a, just a touch of yellow here to the upper part of the cheek. And then let's refine the side of her nose. Have 
a good excuse for color right here on the underside of her nose. It's picking up quite a bit of red from the, from probably the leather jacket. And I'm just going to indicate where that, about where that highlight is. I'm going to hit it several times as I'm working this out so that I get it in the right place and with the right amount of force. Just sort of making little touches here that help um, help create the volume of the nose. Um, it would be easy to just look at this as a one shape against another and just have it go kind of flat on me. I just want to start thinking now in dimensionally. What's what's in front of what? How it's turning in space? So that I can start to get the the feeling of the volume of the nose. I'm gonna get a little bit of purple in here. I know it looks mostly black, but it's a good excuse to get a little of that purple color in. too much purple, but that's fine. She's got a little bit of pointiness. And that comes across. Okay. And then I get a little more purple in there. Not, not intentionally, but it's fine. here and then darker along the edge a little bit of purple I think yep. I also see a little bit of yellows and reds in there but whatever okay and then there's this very soft turn into her nostril where it goes from the light of the nose to the dark inside the nostril and you can we can see a little bit of red and then I'm going to give a nice dark shot of black right there it's really going to punch a hole into the space there okay there's James with some um, some uh, unrelated questions. <laughs> That's okay. When I said questions, I meant art questions. Um, do you listen to Denzel Curry? I don't even know who that is. Okay. I lost the shadow on that far side there with all the back and forth with purple. So let's go with black here. Highlights here on the underside of the nose. Filtrum swoops down this way. There's a little bit of yellow in there in that reflected highlight. Okay, and then what's going to make the lip work here is really getting the stress and the tension of her biting the lip. Let's see if I can just indicate that tooth a little bit without it, without making it look like it's glowing or something. So that's just going to be like a dark bluish gray 
in that shadow with a little bit of black or red around it. I think if I do it red, then you get the feeling that the lip is actually bent around here. that shape down a little bit here and I'm missing the bottom edge of her nostril here a bit of purple a little red okay that's good on that side. Let's do a little bit of adjustment on this side too. And then we have a little bit of the shadow from underneath her lip here. It's pretty dark in this one spot. light coming around this side. Okay, that looks pretty good. And we've got this light. I'm just going to do thick white paint there just right off the bat. You can carve into it a little to refine that shape. grayer. Just sometimes I just need to say to myself, grayer. I see the color in it, but that doesn't mean I should paint it that color. I just need to lean the gray in that direction. Then I have kind of a hot red, kind of right along the jawline there. Slight look of so more like the expression the painting will be. So just the the lift of that eyebrow there, the bite of her lip, and a few other elements that help um, help create that idea. Oh, okay. Hopefully, you guys are still seeing this. My picture keeps on hanging up and you know, it's still going okay Got a little fleck of light here so right around that eye so I have to go darker a little bit darker not too much to get that to work This is where I start doing a lot of squinting because that's what helps uh, see where where those transitions are. Need a little more orange in my pool of color.
trimming of her eyebrows. Got them nice and fleek, I guess. Okay, so one corner of her eye just just a little bit too high here. So just pull that down a little. Her eyebrow actually starts to come down even lower here. And I can start to refine these shapes as I can um, compare them to the reference a little bit and see where they're just off by a little here and there. Let's get a little bit of this lightish purpley color that's coming in here. I don't know how to get light enough and enough purple, but no, I need to actually come in with white here. A little bit thicker. Okay, Jill says, do you have any recommendations um, for an air scrubber filter? I'm setting up a studio in my basement and could really use something. I don't even, not even sure. Oh, air scrubber filter. Um, no, but I think that if you're doing oil painting and you're um, not using turpentine, you're using odorless, um, odorless mineral spirits and you don't have um, any other toxins really in your in your paints and you're not using any mediums that are highly volatile then you shouldn't really even need so much um, ventilation um, because there's nothing that you you're painting with that's actually giving off any fumes um, whether there's you know other moisture or mold issues in your house, maybe that might be a reason to have additional ventilation, but um, for the paints themselves, you don't really, um, you used to, used to everyone painted with turpentine and um, some of the varnishes and some of the, the mediums, and still some of the mediums today have, um, depending on what you're using, like Demar varnish, um, can and some of the resins can have a very strong smell and you need a lot of um, ventilation. But um, I mean, right now I could, I could use um, safflower oil as my thinner instead of the, the, um, the Gamsol, sorry, it took a while to pull that word out instead of the Gamsol. Um, but um, you could paint just with oils, um, as your thinner, like a, a safflower oil, and then you wouldn't, um, you there wouldn't be actually anything really that toxic that you're you're painting with that you would need to do that much. Uh, <clears throat> there's um, I'm trying to remember the podcast that I listened to. It's an artist that does a lot of interviewing of other artists, and she interviewed Robert Gamblin of Gamblin Paints and the, um, I forget his name, but the president of Gamblin Paints. Um, and they talked a lot about the, the, how much safer oil painting is now than it used to be, and how when they work with their products, they try to keep safety in mind to try to get out most of the the toxic ingredients. So um, as, as I refine around this eye, I really do want it to pop. Like it's just really, f I want it to feel very real. 
the rest of the face I can maybe go a bit softer but as you look at the eye I want you to feel like it's just kind of you know pasted in there almost from a photograph which means I do have to get these little kind of eyelash things going up here and get some of these creases looking right to do, but it's not that hard to come back and clean it up a little. That's the problem is I'm using too big a brush, which is fine. I'd rather be using too big a brush than too small. But it just means that if I'm not careful, I wipe out a bunch of stuff that I didn't want to. The upside of that is that it looks... Um, you really get more of a paintbrush kind of feeling to the painting and not tight little um, cautious paint strokes which can have the effect of making the painting just look a little bit lifeless just a little bit too white there, but it's okay. I can pick some of it up. And then I really want to get this sheen that's on her upper eyelid. That's sort of the payoff right up there. That's looking pretty good. And then I got another little highlight that's right here in the where the side of her nose into the eye there's a little bit of a direction change that's catching the light it's actually a lot prettier than the way I made it so if I can clean that up a little and get that very graphic that's where I might have to use the smaller brush here just a little brush to get this little highlight come in a little bit darker on the sides of it. It's nice if I can do it all in one brush stroke, but <laughs> it doesn't always go that way. We got a nice little turn of light right there. And then I got a nice um, big highlight right at the tip of her nose here. It's not reading because there's too much light around it. So I have to make sure I'm going dark enough on the tip of her nose. Which I'm sure I'm not. Let's see, I'm losing that red that's underneath here. So I'm just going to exaggerate that a little. And then bring it back. starting to take shape here.
So I think the po- the podcast that I was thinking of that had uh, Robert Gamble and uh, from Gamble and Paints I'm um, talking is called the Savvy Artist. I can't remember the person's name offhand. Something Wood, but um, Andres say Wood. If I, my memory is so bad about things like that, people's names. So if that's right, then. I will actually be a, st- a little bit astonished. Um, but yeah, so it's a very good podcast about um, modern paints and how they're not as toxic as they used to be. It's sort of one of people's fears about using um, oil paints is the, this perception that they're messy and toxic and they're really not like they used to be. So I do have to go darker in this cheek. This is really what's going to help turn the form a little bit, is that cheek is moving away from us. And there's little bits of light, but not as much as I um, put in. And then I really have to punch these shadows just a little bit uh, darker. Get this chin here a little bit, chin, the cheek a little bit deeper. If I look at it, I didn't give it quite. enough roundness there, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And then same with the underside of her chin, needs just to be a little bit rounder. And then going darker on this side. But I still have her chin too long, I can feel it. gave her a man's chin. So let's try to fix that fix that a little bit. Okay, that's a little bit better. Still not feeling quite the right shape on this side of it. So that's just really controlling how the softness of this edge and where it where it's really turning before that starts to look right. And that's a lot of very subtle shifts of color and value. So sometimes it takes a lot of back and forth before you get it. That's feeling a little bit better. And try to go a little bit lighter here. Okay, we're starting to get there, slowly. And then her neck, obviously, is going to be darker than, than probably both cheeks. And just scrub that color in a little bit if I want, and let it go thinner as it goes across. Lost a little bit of that underside of her jawline there. I'm just going to throw a little purple there, a little bit of black, and then coming out of it we do have kind of a warm red on the underside. Not bad. Okay. That's going to take a little bit of refinement, but it's not horrible. Okay, let's get some of the red in. Um, I'm, I'm going to mix up a big color for the background and a lot of red for her her jacket. And, uh, and then we'll talk about a little bit how to get that texture, the shine on the jacket. Um, whether I would just want to come in with straight strokes or do a little bit of, um, of um, scumbling or 
dabbing of, uh, of lights to really kind of get that texture going. But, um, you know, palette knife, I pretty much want to go straight, um, naphthal red here. That's looking pretty close to the right color. Maybe just a touch of the crinacridone red. If I can get enough of the clean color in there. I think I'm going to have to pull some out of my bag if I really want to get some in. And not my biggest brush, but a pretty sizable one. And I'm going to mix a little bit of the safflower oil to make sure that I'm keeping a, not going too thin. Oh, that's nice. Okay, so the transparency is really what's going to help here get the intensity of color that I'm looking for. I can just paint the whole thing in and then come back over with my darks. That's really nice bright. And I am in the right place. Okay, we got a little bit of it coming down here. edge. We got a little bit of this coming down. Then we have her sleeve. Not worrying about those highlights yet. I'm just trying to get the just the base of the color. So eventually I'm going to start thinking about the shadows which will be black or darker red. You can just start to indicate them a little bit to sort of feel where I am. button there. And this gets very dark right in here. And in here. So let's just start blocking that out. Just let the paint do a little bit of the work, the way it, um, the Aldo Prima just kind of mixes into itself already. We made great progress there with just a few strokes. There's a little bit of the hair coming down that way. And then jump right back into her face, that same big brush. You can use a little bit of the red right here. It's the same color that's reflecting back into her face. Okay, make sure the hairline doesn't get away from me here. just feel like that this eye is just drooping just a little bit. I don't care how much time I've spent on it already. I'm just going to can move that around. What I'm missing too is this doesn't feel like it's moving back enough in space, so I'm losing some volume.
going to mix up some of the background color that I want, although it's tempting just to leave it white. But if I want the highlights in her face to really pop, then I have to go darker with the background. So let's clean up my palette a little bit. Let's get this red under control. people here with me. That's good. I'm sure some people are still voting on which painting they want, which photo they want me to paint from. I still have it on my Instagram page. So even though I did post this, that I was going to paint this one, people still just keep on voting. In fact, over 600 people voted, um, but the majority um, picking this one. Um, well, it came out to, um, what do they call that, a, a um, minority majority? I know there's a term for it where you don't have a clear majority, but it was um, about 38% chose this one over the other choices. Okay, I'm going a little purple. See that color? I like it. Um, I'm going to modulate it as it moves around, maybe getting a little bit greener here and darker towards the bottom, like in the photo. But um, and I have to mix up a lot more of it if I'm going to really cover everything. And I don't mind getting a little bit opaque, kind of thicker with this. We'll give it a little more interest. wetter though to get it going. Shivani uh, Sabrina says, which brushes do you use? To tell you the truth, I don't like to spend a lot of money on brushes. I, I'm pretty brutal to my brushes. And within a week or two, they're almost unusable. Um, I've been getting a little bit better about taking care of them. Um, and they have been holding up just a, a wee bit better. Um, but I don't like spending more than a few dollars on a brush. So I actually have a mixture of different brands, just whatever's on sale. Often I can get the um, um, the Langnickel, um, Royal Langnickel brushes pretty inexpensively at Michael's and or online. And so I do have a lot of those. I do have some Princeton brushes. Um, um, what was this one? This was Creative Mark, I think, that I got online. I forget which of the art suppliers. Um, that's a brand of one of them. Okay, this I need to start thinking about going darker towards the bottom, and it still has a fair amount of color, so I'm going to push the color, add a little bit of black, something like that. Probably could go even darker than that. So. The black that I'm using is something called chromatic black. It's a Gamblin um, artist oil color. And it's a mixture of crinacridone red and phthalo emerald. They're perfect complements mixed in the right proportion, just look like black. And makes a beautiful um, transparent black that you can get richer and richer through layering or going very thick. You can get a nice black from, from that. and. Uh, for those who don't like the way black mixes with other colors this is, or or vibrates with other colors, this is a nice black um, to use in your palette. There's lots of um, artists who comes from teaching that you never want to paint with black. 
um, that you should mix your own blacks. Well, this is a mixed black, so um, it's kind of a uh, happy compromise in a way. That um, I mean, some would say that if it's if it's highly mixed, then you're really not seeing the color anymore. That you've mixed the colors so mechanically that it's better to hand mix it, and then you get some variation of color in the black itself. Um, I like black as a graphic element, so sometimes I like it to be dark and punchy and not really see the color in it. All right. If I do want to see colors, then I'll add some purple or some other um, transparent darks in there so that um, there is some a color difference. Let's see if I can get some darker areas going here. height here for the hair then I can work back and forth a little bit create some interesting edges with uh, the paint mixing Just um, looking at the reference again, I don't want to copy it exactly. I do want some freshness from the brush work. And if I'm making an exact copy, I'm not going to get that. Um, but I do want to pay attention to the reference to see where certain landmarks are so that I can make sure I'm getting the right shape to her head and her hair and playing back and forth until it, that part of it feels right. Okay, good. So now I have most of the panel covered. And now I can start to see where things are feeling a little bit off. And I do want to get some of the values and colors right so it really does feel like real flesh, real flesh and blood and not just um, a lesser version of the photo. I don't want it to look like a copy of the photo, though. I want you to believe that I've painted this from life. And so to do that, it has to have a certain amount of freshness in the brushwork. Really came very red here. I pulled the red right out from my palette, but but it's good because I needed that to get um, closer to the color that's there. Okay, need to put away this. This brush is getting a little bit too big for me to to control, so I'm going to start coming back with a little bit smaller brush. This is a nice, soft, and synthetic sable that's round, and I can get a lot of control with this brush. And it's good for later on in the painting where I need to um, have control over colors that are over other wet areas because the softness of the brush allows you not to dig so deep into the paint. Okay, and here I want to uh, bend this, um, the tones here so that you feel the, the cheek wrapping around. Okay, so I can see where I'm running into problems here is that this area is too wide. And that's why I wasn't getting the right feel the cheek, but it is coming down straighter and a little bit wider right here. So it's kind of creating the wrong angle and not really feeling like I had the right shape to her face. So by correcting that, then it's starting to feel a little bit better. Let's 
Okay, gonna come in a lot thicker here. Really want to get that shine, so I need to get very white. Same here, and then we'll have that nice painterly texture that you can only get with paint. You can get some of these effects with digital painting, but it's never quite the same as the actual paint. The way I look at it is why use a digital program to mimic um, paint strokes when you can just stroke, you can just make paint strokes with paint. Very lucky in that way, this is my preferred medium. just want to get this accent here that's on the lower top of the lower eyelid just need it to be a little bit cleaner and darker and I need a little bit of the white of the eye that's on this side oh that's nice okay and then I lost a little bit of that nice white line that's here, that's here that's really catching the light. Let's see if I can get it thick and delicate at the same time. Okay, it's got a dark that's right underneath it. There we go. I think that's about what I wanted. Let's make it even a little more subtle. Yep, that's good. Then see if I can get a little bit of white to sit on top of the highlight that I already put down. Uh, something like that. Yep, I like it. Okay. So I'm just loading up this tiny little detail brush with a ton of paint. And then I can just, the paintbrush itself isn't even touching the surface. It's just the paint that's loaded up on it. it makes that first contact and it's just leaving a little bit of a um, frosting tip of white. Okay, and I have that other eye. I have it very um, undefined, a little bit blurry. Which I kind of like, but I do want that part actually to be in focus. So, okay, and so there's a fold here in her eye that swoops around. And it goes to red around this way. Well, not quite the right shape yet, but I'll get there. And then this comes straight out, but I also have the shadow into the eye, so it's kind of doing two different things at the same time. I have to be careful that I'm not misrepresenting the shape of the eye because of that shadow. bending down a little bit this way. So we got a light um, hitting her lower eyelid here that's coming up into the iris. And then it's sliding down this way. So I have a little bit of a crease from the lower eyelid that's sliding down her cheek then I have a little bit of this a red that's coming off of the lower eyelid there. That's not so bad. Okay. And then bring this dark in a little. So all that I'm doing now really, well, coming in and coming in with thicker pain and improving the values is I'm really evaluating the 
measurements that I have and the shapes, the angles, and doing as much correction as I can as I'm doing a little bit of everything. That's too thick a brush. I don't know what I was thinking to get that highlight there. So I have something off a little bit of the angle of the forehead here. These are bangs coming down. So if I can put a little bit of a highlight in the hair, I can go very blue. Here, dark, just keep it dark and blue. And then it'll look a little more natural. a bit of that color coming in in different places where it's not pure black. And that gives me an excuse to add in some color where I don't normally have it and have some interesting kind of um, accents going on. I still want a sense of believability even though I'm really playing with the brushwork. So where I can get the hair to feel like it's coming forward or back, um, getting sort of a soft uh, camera-like effect with some of the brush strokes or some of the hair wrapping around. I want to get that if I can. I don't want to paint every strand of hair, I just want to get the feeling of it. Okay, um, so Jill says thank you. Shivani uh, says, you are such a great artist, yet a humble um, person. I've learned a lot watching your videos. Thank you very much. You know, as artists, we kind of do this, you know, thing on our own, alone. It's interesting with social media, there's so much sharing that's happening that um, wouldn't have been possible years ago, but mostly, you know, I would have been doing this by myself um, in my studio, in the quiet of my studio. Now I can do it, and you guys can watch me do it from wherever you are in the world, essentially. I don't even know where so most of you are. There's right now 11 people watching. There was about 20 before, but from all over the world. So it's, in my mind, that's kind of amazing. Trying to get some of the grays back in here. Then make sure that I hold on to some of those pinks too. Just trying to develop the shapes here. I know that I have the cheek bending around. Eventually I will get to some of the freckles in her complexion. I want to make sure I get these nice clean peak, um, pinks that are in her cheek and little bits of light that tell you where things are turning. And I have to make sure I'm getting the hair down low enough here. Because I was giving her a little bit too much forehead, but now I have to come back fix where I chopped off some of her forehead. 
keeping some of that brighter red in there. Okay, so I have to watch this angle and the value here to make sure that her sense that her forehead's moving back in space here because that's really important to get the right sense of movement to her to her head the right angle and I'm not keeping enough red there it went a little bit too gray Getting a little thicker here, and that's okay. I want to develop some texture in her face. And that gives me the ability to um, to paint over colors that are, aren't um, close to where they need to be. I can come in with fairly thick paint right over top of it with this soft brush, of course. line over Okay, so this other eye is going to need some work. Some of these other shapes around the, the eyebrows need some refinement, but we're getting there. Slowly I can start, it starts to feel like what it needs to be. Need a little bit more volume this direction. And I do need a little bit more here in the back. This is where her brains are back here. So I gotta make sure that that we give that enough space. And I do want to get a little bit lighter and cleaner blue right back here.
so everything in the painting right now is generally where it needs to be. It just is um, this kind of need refinement overall, especially in our focal area here. Um, get the nose, the anatomy of the nose looking right and uh, getting things turning in space um, accurate enough so that it feels right. I, my goal is not to do a copy of the photo, though. That would be a little bit of a waste. I um, really want it to look like a painting, but I want it to be convincing. Convincing that it feels like flesh and blood, but it also feels like oil paint. Got a little bit too gray in this spot. So I need a little bit cleaner color, lighter, cleaner, in some spots here, especially on that chin. I'm just blending in a few places. I'm not going to get carried away with the blending, but some of the transitions just need to be a little bit softer so that you can connect the bits of form together. Sometimes all those sharp transitions get a little bit distracting and it doesn't pull together as a whole. So either you need to blend some pieces down or you have to come down and have intermediate steps that make it a little bit softer. Like right in here, here's a good example where it's just getting a little bit too busy to read correctly. So just by coming over with a softer brush and knocking some of the transitions and textures down, then it starts to pull together a little bit better. see I needed to go darker so just putting in a darker step and then knocking it down a little bit so that it feels like part of the face The shape of the nostril is a little bit off. It's a little bit too small. So just pulling it out a little bit. Preserving the shadow that's here. It just comes down a little bit more. Just these little subtleties really um, start to make a big difference. If you can get a little bit, just a little bit more accuracy. thicker paint to get that white to read correctly. And then we got a nice 
nice pink that comes across there. gonna restate the whites on her cheeks here. Oop. Well, that was a lot of paint. <laughs> That's okay. And a lot of emotion here, right here in the forehead. So a little bit of tension there, so making you feel that little passage is important. Is pretty dark and red before the hair comes in. Okay, so Eric, I asked, AJ, do you make a, make your living purely from painting? And no, I don't. I do, a, um, I work full time at a, found at a um, medical membership um, company. What do you call that? A, a association. And I do um, web development and web design for them. And that's really what, and plus my wife works full time. So that's really what pays the bills. The painting over time has done a little bit better, um, especially since I've started now focusing on portraiture and have been getting fairly steady commissions, but it's really not enough to pay the bills. So this will be my retirement career once I get to that point, and I will keep on painting for as long as I can, as long as my mental health um, mental capacities hold up and my physical capacity, wherever I end up retiring, I'm going to be doing this. And I hope to improve over time. So each painting that I do, I hope I'm a little bit better each time. So um, who knows, maybe my paintings will be worth quite a lot someday, hopefully before I die. And not, um, well, I don't mind if they have value after I die, but wouldn't mind uh, benefiting a little bit from it. Okay, slowly getting there, S slowly getting the parts of the face to feel like they're turning in space, um, the right speed and angle without losing the the nice freshness of the brushwork, just having to keep um, keep on using um, fairly big brushes here to do that. Okay. Just need a little bit of a crease in the right there. That looks good. This get a little bit lighter towards that tear duct. And then we have a little bit of a highlight there. That's a, I got a lot of paint on a big brush trying to paint a little spot, but not too bad. I think I need my I need my smaller brush to do this right though. the corner. Got a little bit of a highlight right here. Got the light of the eye coming out a little 
little bit further. That gets darker. Didn't quite go dark enough there. If you really want to feel the the eye turning, you really need to get that um, get the values right in the white of the eye. just coming up right there. That's not too bad. And then need that little bit of light there where the light is hitting it with that lower eyelid the most. You can even exaggerate that just a little bit and make sure that I'm also getting that dark edge from the lower eyelid where it's meeting the eye. Okay, that doesn't look too bad. Okay, so let's get the shadow going on her nostril. You need to pull that up a little bit higher. Kind of got away from me a little bit there. <coughs> to the other nostril. I think it's very red there and then comes out a little bit wider this way. Oh, that's a little bit too far so I can trim it a little bit with this very dark gray red. Um, I missed shadow here. Let's try this again. This comes up higher. That's looking better. Let's carve a little bit this way. Let's fix that other eye here. I can. And the reflection is kind of a bright blue. It's got thalo, a little bit of thalo blue and white going here for that. Needed to be pretty intense, so it has to stay pretty fairly dark. No, but it needs to be lighter than that. Okay, that's where I might not get quite the intensity that I want, but it needs to be at least light enough so that it feels like light reflecting. Well, I'm just smearing that all over the place. Okay, let's clean that up. Too small a brush, maybe. Let's see if I can find a... I think this one is going to work a little bit better. Have a little more control over it.
So this, there's this cast shadow from the eyelid, but I had it pretty hard. And in the reference, it's a nice soft line. So I just want to fix that up a little bit. And then I kind of have a lot of mess right here, a lot of thicker paint that's not under control. Let's try to clean that up a little bit. Using some of my red that's here. And this bright red really tells me that it's starting to move into the shadow. Okay. Okay, you guys are probably completely bored out of your minds now, but that's okay. Hopefully some of you are drawing or painting along, which I like to hear. Um, it's good practice for everybody. Okay, and let's see if we can start to get pull. I'm not quite done with the face, but it wouldn't be bad to pull some of the detail out of the, the coat at this point. Oh, why did I do that? I need to keep that nice and clean. my little reflection here. went too dark in that spot, that's okay. Line it up just a little. I just wanted to move this highlight over a little. This is probably too small a brush for what I'm doing here, but just wanted a little more accuracy in the values. Let's get the corner of the eye there. There's a little bit of a highlight going on there. This race, how they're getting a little bit of a yellow color coming in. It's much more subtle than what I just did there, but. Okay, so, um, Elephant Blue says, I am painting along, different image of course, reminds me of art school painting side by side. Amazing to see how quickly you put this together. Thank you. Glad you're also painting. I'm missing a little bit of my shadow underneath the lip here, and that's kind of has a lot of black in it, giving it 
making it look a lot grayer. Then a little bit of red, bright red, right here. Let's get this more intense darker red here, the underside of that lip. Let's make sure we're not losing the center line of this, of her lips here. And I lost a little bit of the fullness of them just from inaccurate, inaccurate drawing. Then we got a little bit of a light on the top edge here. Remember I said I was going to try to get that tooth to read. It's actually making it a little bit on the purple side. Then I'm going to come in with black right underneath it here. Well, that was just way too light. I don't know what I was thinking. So I gotta knock that back quite a bit for it to read properly. And that's not too bad. I can go even a little bit darker there and it will still read pretty well because everything's so dark around it. Yeah. Just want it pretty subtle but that you can still see it. bit softer edge here where it, the lip folds over. Now I'm spending quite a bit of time on the lips here, but it's important that they read properly. Actually, a little bit of purple color right there, very light purple, if I can get it to read right. And then it shifts very quickly to red. So that's just, you know, 
looking, observing, you can pick out some of these things. Starting to get on the late side, but that's okay. I'm going to keep on going for as long as I feel fairly conscious. And I'm going to start indicating some of these freckles. I just want a little bit more surface information. That's not the right color, though. Orange and black generally kind of giving a warmer, no, mostly orange then. As much as I can keep it a dark orange. Yeah, that's a little bit better. And some pretty close to just reds. And there's quite a bit of freckles that define the turn of the nose here. It's possible to go overboard with this. I just really want a light indication of the freckles in her face to give a little more interest. I used to have really struggled with this, and I would try to paint the freckles early on, and that was really a um, mistake, at least for how I work, um, because I would never get to the underlying value structure that made the forms work. I was too focused on the, the change of values of the freckles against the flesh tones and missing the bigger picture. white. I need some of that purple up in here. Finding the shadow here a little bit to get the shape of her chin. I want her chin to have the same level of rendering as the tip of her nose so that it feels, you can feel the anatomy. freckles later.
Now I'm starting to feel the surface a little bit between the freckles and the careful value structure and the texture of the paint. Really starting to feel the, the surface of the of her face a little bit more. Okay, still feel like I'm missing it with the chin, so I'm just going to work on that a little bit more, get a little more accurate in terms of values until I start to really feel it. It's feeling a little bit better. We're getting there. Need a little bit. I need my bigger, softer brush here, though. a little more texture in the forehead here where this 
drops down the bridge of the nose. Make sure I have her nose going up high enough. And then again, I'm going to hit that reflection. Until it starts to look right. And we got a little more reflection in here. And I keep on piling up the white on that spot until I'm really feeling it. bit more of the white of the eye here. Just want to move the edge of the eye over a little. It has a nice soft edge. That's kind of what's going on in the photo. There, I have a nice clean um, reflection there in the eye now. Took a while to get there, but I got it. Let's do the same with the other eye. Not bad. some of this area here. This should be simplified quite a bit more. I'm going to bring in some of these strands of hair that are dropping down. Some are kind of reddish, others are more black.
accent underneath the lip there to read right so that's starting to read starting to get there really going dark enough in this shadow here yet. That's really hard when you're going from such a dark shadow to some of these mid-tones. And it's a really soft, um, subtle change. But it's dramatic at the same time, so you kind of have to work a little bit to get it to, to look right. I do have this shadow coming off the eye, sort of sliding down her cheek there. A little bit of purple. Let's make that um, the white of her eye just a little bit bigger. This comes in much closer here. that softer brush I had. some of this area in here. Got a little bit too red in the in the light area here. Let's see. Need a little softer transition. Not getting too pink. Close to black down here at the base of the neck. We need those darks to really help with the feeling of leather. Okay, speaking of leather, need to get this texture going somehow. It's going to take a little bit of playing around before I think it starts to read.
let's get this button in here working. Just a dark shape. Then I can come in with a white right on top of that. And I can refine that reflection a little bit. And that's kind of all it needs, really. Another button right here. Maybe that's off a little bit. It has red reflecting off the face of it. Let's see if I can get that to read. To get that to read, there has to be a little bit of a dark on the far edge. Something like that. And then again, the Run brush. Let's get a smaller brush in here, nice and clean. We want just a bit of white that sits right on top. Yep, it's not so accurate um, placement, but it's good enough. It reads. It looks. It looks good. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to get that intensity of red right there, unless it's very transparent, and I have too much paint down for that, but just wanted to get that little bit of reflection that's coming off the material. up too high, but I don't care. Um, we can just put a little bit of red in here, just to show that it's reflecting. And then, again, with that little bit of white. Okay, let's just get a little bit of the shadow there. I really don't have to do too much more for the leather. You may want to clean it up a little bit in spots. And darken it up, add a little purples, just so that it, the shadows and the material read. Let's get this uh, darker area in here. bit of black. I can throw some purple in there. isn't a white reflection there, but it's just helping it read a little bit better. And then we got these bits of, it really has a lot more texture, but I don't think I want to get into the texture here. It's not really the focus of the painting. I just wanted to, the surface to read a little bit. And I 
I like this, um, forget what they call this, the shoulder piece. I like this edge to read properly. I have to get a bit of black, kind of a very thin line of it. And then this also goes right off the edge. Excuse me. Wow, sorry for blowing your ears out. Okay, and just a couple more things here, and then I'm just going to leave the, the coat alone. still wanted the red to be cleaner in a couple spots where it got a little bit um, a little bit too much black in it I just think that there's just some areas of the hair that just need to be punched a little bit. And I think we're pretty close to having this thing um, be done. So just need a little more black on the palette.
just get a little more playful. Doesn't have to be perfect, but try to get some of those flyaway strands that are moving around. Then you can come back in with the background color and sort of punch little holes in it. Counter movements of strands of hair. You can have a little bit of fun with. And just in terms of the face, I do want to just um, come out with a little bit of bluish white spot right on top of that highlight that's there. Just want it to be a little punchier. Helps if I have a clean brush when I come back in with those blacks, but and I do want just a little bit of height, uh, lighter light in the white of the eye there. really want that to, to sing. Same with this eye. Remember I had a beautiful um, line of white there that I kind of lost. I just played with it a little bit too much. Got a little bit softer. Okay, so something's bothering me a little bit about that eye still. The, the crease in the eye just feels like it's in the wrong, the wrong shape or the wrong spot. Let's see if I can get it. It's kind of a dark red. No. That's closer. I just need to trim it a little bit. Of course, I need to give her her eyelashes. Got it, kind of got gunky with my mascara there. That's not too bad. Just a little bit of making the eyebrows look like they're actually hair. Let's do a little bit here. OK, 
Okay, very close here. Don't want to overwork it. Um, you know what? I am. I think I'm going to end the video here. Um, I may do some minor touches, but I think it's it's very close. Um, as I see something I want to change. And um, you guys are welcome to, to uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and um, watch again if you want um, and come back again another week. Let's just get a little bit of that nice, um, what do you call that, um, atmospheric light around the hair there, a little bit of a halo effect, and I think I want to get a little bit back here, and then I'm going to throw my signature on, and Bob's your uncle, it's so a finished painting, okay, um, what I like to do is if it's all wet, I like to be able to sign into the paint, um, something you can't do if you spend too much time on a painting paint it over days and you really can't do that part of it okay so that's it for tonight thank you very much for watching and um, hope to see you again soon